Welcome back to The Breakfast. Uh, final conversation this morning. We're going to be moving into a crisis that has rocked the world. And of course, uh, little aspects where it involves uh, Nigeria. The Israel-Palestine crisis has led to the death of more than 100 people in the last few days. And in reaction to it, uh, world powers, the United States and uh, United Nations, have all tried to step in to, uh, of course, a call for a ceasefire. The Turkish president, Recep Tayyip Erdogan, of course, uh, in reaction to all the crises, uh, reached out to the Nigerian government saying that he believes Nigeria will support Palestine um, in the wake of all of this uh, crisis. This morning, we're going to be speaking with um, Mr. Kach on Nonuju um, and uh, having a quick discussion about this. Good morning. And uh, well, thanks for joining us. But I think we don't have him yet. We're going to have to reconnect with him in a bit. Yeah, so I think one of the biggest questions here is, should Nigeria intervene? Should Nigeria say something in the global community about this particular issue? We were talking about this off cam, and you were like, OK, we're part of the Organization of Islamic Countries. So that means Nigeria should automatically take a side with um, Palestine. But really, I, I think there's, if, if you see the body language of Nigerians as a whole, there's just been a lot of talk about you know, you not taking the speck out of your own eye and you're trying to do that for someone else and talks about charity beginning from home and talks about all the myriad of challenges we're having in the country, having secessionist agitations from the north, the south, the east, the west, wherever. We're having issues with our security forces. We're having issues with, you know, just preys on the, or predators on the prowl looking for young girls and boys to basically attack, maim, kill. Well, There's just a lot going on in Nigeria. We, we have a full plate of, well, security, of security challenges in the country. So um, people say, why don't we fix ourselves rather than chip into, you know, the Palestinian-Israeli conflict has been going on for years and years, and I don't think it will end today, or that Nigeria taking a side would actually do anything. Maybe, if anything, it might even aggravate the, the conflict, if anything, because we're not taking a side in this conflict. But I, I, don't, I don't really see exactly the focus or the aim of this, but like I mentioned, the, the, the question should be, should Nigeria be getting involved in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict right now? And uh, it, Mr. Kachan, it, it, you should really give us his own thoughts on, on, on this matter soon enough. Well, it depends on what you describe as taking a side or, you know, getting involved. Um, I don't expect that, you know, it would get to the place where we would need to get involved mili uh, militar militarily. Um, Definitely I think not. It is Do really we have just, enough soldiers um, for, no, on, no. on our end? No, so, no, no we don't. Um, I, I think it is really just, um, you know, support basically uh, politically and, um, you know, with regards... Um, you know, every time, they, they, you know, when things like this happen, they always draw, you know, a table and say, okay, these are countries that, you know, support this place. These are countries that support, you know, this. You remember when the, you know, Biafra, uh, the civil war happened, yes. there was also that table, you know, these are countries that support Definitely. Nigeria, these are countries that support, you know, Biafra and all of that. So there's always that. Um, it, it, Nigeria may not, you know, be able to take a stand um, actively. You know, but it's really just to say that this is where our you know, no, our definitely, it's are. all it's all and one speeches of the, and um, yeah, one basically of the um, political stances. One of the aides to the president also tweeted um, um, something about Palestine a couple of days ago. You know, so you can already tell that the Nigerian government already, you know, would be leaning towards Palestine. Um, there's people who, of course, would have their own thoughts. You know, there's uh, Nigerians who you know, of course, are Christians and would mm -hmm. like to always lean towards the Jews or lean yes. towards Israel and all of that. You know, so it's, 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 a, it's, um, it, it, it's uh, many, many angles, you know, that you may want to see it from, you know, but Nigeria as a country, um, of what relevance is it, you know, really, you know, that, you know, they are taking a stand, you know, with our own challenges. And I would also quickly say that every country has their own challenges. Every country has their own security challenges. Every country has their own, you know, gender, you know, challenges, you know, economy, um, corruption, all of that, you know, but it doesn't stop, you know, every nation from being able to say that at a time like this, when lives are being lost between Israel and Palestine, you know, we would like to say that we stand with the Israeli people or we'd like to say that we stand with the Palestinian people. Uh, because this is the way that we understand the crisis, and this country needs to back down on all of that. Um, you know, this is this is stuff that has happened as you know uh, many many years ago, 18th century, as far back as um, you know, even 1947 is when it really began to you know uh, develop into something bigger than we uh, than the world expected. 
um, there's also different ways that people understand it. Some people see it as, oh, you know, and that's the one that really, really just annoys me, where people see it as, you know, uh, God is, you know, the God of the Israeli people that is fighting for them and all of that. You know, I, I feel it, you know, really, really ignorant because if you know um, the foundation of all of it, you know, you would also see where the Israelis have gone totally wrong, how they have committed their own years and years of human rights abuses and bullying and killing and murder of Palestinians. Mm -hmm. You would also see where people would argue that, you know, that that's what has given rise to the, you know, to uh, the emergence of groups like Hamas, yes. you know, who have become a militarized and a, you know, a terror group, you know, to defend the Palestinian people. Um, so there's numerous angles to this. You know, it's always safer to really just stay away from it because you can never really, really fully understand the, scope. the, so, yes. the you know, the scope of this whole crisis. I've read the book, um, the book Son of Hamas. Um, it's a story of a, uh, a man who, who, who grew up, you know, in Hamas. He, his father was one of the leaders of Hamas. And so he was able to tell the story from um, a very, 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 um, you know, deep perspective of how the group functions, of why the group, you know, exists, of why, you know, politics and money and corruption and some of all those things have made it difficult for uh, the group to be, to be defeated and, for, and made it difficult for the war to or even, you know, be won mm -hmm. um, or for any peace deals, you know, to ever be reached because there's people in the Palestinian government and people in the Israeli government who have been on on the ground being you know funding and supporting you know the, these groups and making sure that they continue to exist mm. um, I don't know what Nigeria you know and the relevance of our stand is but maybe it's just to add to the number of uh, Islamic nations so, and allies, yeah, you know, indeed. that will stay with this side or okay. with that side. So um, I have a statement here from the Federal Ministry of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Abuja, and uh, this statement was signed by Ferdinand Omoye, as a spokesperson of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, uh, signed uh, on Thursday, May 13, 2021, and it reads: The Ministry of Foreign Affairs wishes to state that the federal government of Nigeria is watching with great concern, you know, the unfolding developments in Israel and Palestine uh, and urges both parties to see reason to de-escalate the hostilities. It went on to say the Nigerian government further urges the two parties to remain committed to the two-state solution and in the meantime guarantee the rights of all citizens uh, to live in peace and dignity. Um, this seems like a politically correct statement. Yeah. You know, they have managed to stay neutral in mm -hmm. this particular statement. You know, we also see the Ministry, Minister of Foreign Affairs here, you know, speaking, talking about how they want, they want both sides to ensure that everybody is safe. But we know that over the weekend on Saturday, there was a bombing, a demolition of a 13-story building which houses the Associated Press and Al Jazeera in the Gaza Strip. So these tensions continue to escalate, like you mentioned. Hundreds of people have died. It's not looking funny. And uh, definitely, we look forward to the United Nations speaking about this. We know that United, um, United States uh, Press, White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki has spoken about this, saying we need to guarantee press freedom, make sure that in the midst of all this crisis, newsmen are safe and you know protected the but the the neutrality uh started um i think in good luck uh, jonathan's administration uh, there was a moment where uh, nigeria decided to be neutral and that's how it has been um you know since then you know so with the current administration you know there is now expectations of where you know we're gonna go if mm -hmm. we're gonna go you know towards palestine or you know with israel or continue to stay neutral um, I am, you know, and I believe that what everybody should be concerned really about is the human angle. Um, there is more than 180 people that have lost their lives in the mm -hmm. last one week, which is very, very... Majority you know, from, um, uh, majority uh, of yeah, Palestinians. Yeah, you know, just about 80 Israelis have, have died, which, you know, you can never look at and say, oh, it's, you know, it's, it's a clash. You know, that, that is not a clash. That is just outright bullying mm. um, and, um, you know, and abuse. Um, there is, you know, many, many years of, of, um, of um, um, you know, settlers you know, pushing Palestinians away from their of their homes, seizing their homes, chasing them away from you know places that they would argue are rightfully theirs, um, and these are things that have gone on for many many years. You know, so um, once again, for me, it is what I think the world should be focused on is the human angle, and that's why there should be a continuous push for a ceasefire. Okay. The human angle, because of the victims and the casualties of this of this war. A lot of them do not belong to Hamas. A lot of them are not necessarily in, in any militarized uh, Palestinian group. A lot of them are families, you know, daughters, sons, fathers, mothers, who are really just innocent Palestinians caught in the crossfire. Sure. Same thing, you know, on the Israeli side. That's where, you know, a lot of the casualties. But um, we cannot continue to just as a, you know, as a world, 
turn our back and act like it doesn't matter that 100 people have died um, um, through bombings, through airstrikes, through, you know, uh, shellings, you know, whatever it is that, you know, they, they have continued to use mm. in the last couple of days. It, it doesn't, it's not normal yes, in any yes. way. Yes, yes. I agree with that angle. You know, lives have been lost, so it would be unfair for the world to turn its back on what's happening there. But on the other hand, experts would argue, like I mentioned, all the crisis going on in the country, you know, who really is speaking about this, you know, on our end? I remember when, you know, the British government tried to intervene, you know, regarding the whole IPOP to grant asylum and how the Nigerian government condemned them. So all these issues come into play. And others will point out to Nigeria's foreign policy, which supposedly focuses on Africa. Yes. You know, it says Nigerian focus on, on you know, foreign policy focuses on Africa uh, as a regional power and by attachment to several fundamental principles, you know, foreign policy focusing on African unity, African independence, African cap capability, exercising hermeneutic influence in Africa. So all these things come, come into play. And when you look at how this you know, the scope of this crisis is really spreading across the world. You look at in Jordan, in Germany, in, in France. Needed. There's been protests, exactly, protests all over the weekend. People coming out in the hundreds and the thousands to protest against what's happening in the, you know, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Lots of people have been arrested. A policeman was actually killed. You know, so this issue needs a lot of de-escalation. Sadly, moment. you know, also to quickly remind, remind um, you know, people, one of the saddest parts of... Um, the world that we live in is when you ask um, for countries and what standard they would take, a lot of countries rely on their own political interests or their own interests. A country's interest, you know, a lot of times is protected first sure. and it's um, put, you know, as top priority before any other thing. You know, so if you're asking for the same thing, you know, when you know, people were calling on uh, the United States or France or, or the UK or Germany to get involved with, you know, issues here yes, in Nigeria. Yes, I'm calling for the, know, yes, um, go ahead. They would, you know, those countries would always look at their political interests first. And sure. that's what they would always put as top priority before they get involved with whatever mess that you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. And so, unfortunately for Israel and Palestine, they would have to also realize that um, whatever countries and whatever decisions, whatever standard you know any country decides to take, would always consider its own political interest first. You know, so that it doesn't lose out on the bigger picture um, um, because it you know took the wrong stand. Mm -hmm. um, innocent lives will continue to be lost because countries would always look at their own political interests first, and they would turn their back. You know, when you expect them to take action. Um, these are all sovereign states also, even if yeah, Palestine, has, Palestine rather has struggled to, you know, um, you know, establish its own sovereignty for a very, very long time. Mm -hmm. But um, there, there would be, you know, a lot of pressure, you know, and I think the pressure really needs to move towards Israel. And it's my personal opinion, needs to move mostly towards Israel um, with regards to the escalation. And this is because of the human angle. Um, the if pressure you cannot, is actually on cannot, Israel, really. I mean, protests for the Israeli, um, you know, um, amb ambassador to resign, protests near the Israeli embassy. So really, the, the, the pressure but, is... Yes, you know, but if you still have 180-something people killed, you know, then it doesn't seem like that pressure means anything to them. Mm. Um, and, you know, if, if you cannot in any way target Hamas, you know, directly... Because, yes, people have said, and, you know, that's the way it really has seen. Hamas has continued to use Palestinians as human shields to protect themselves from being targeted. And so when these airstrikes and these bombings occur, it's, it, you know, it, we, it, we there's know, a lot of human casualties. casualties you know, are, even yes. if, you know, instead of, the, you know, the Hamas um, leaders and fighters, you know, to be killed, um, a lot of people eventually, you know, are wiped mm. away in, in all of that. Um, I think we have our guest now, um, Mr. Kachan Nonuju. Thank you very much. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, sir. Mr. Ononoji, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Fantastic. Let's bring you in on what you think regarding the Israeli-Palestinian conflict and what the stance of Nigeria should be at this time. Should we get involved? Yes. I think uh, the issue of the Palestinian crisis is uh, a consequence of the four years of inactivity in regards to the peace process. The Trump administration was constantly trying to get all its Arab friends to make peace with Israel without making peace of Israel. Mr. Onanuji, can you hear us? And that's where you see that fail. So I believe the Palestinians have every right to desperately seek to force these calibrations in intentions 
to bring their case to the international community. For me, that is what has happened. The more Israel bombs the Gaza, the more you see the world will say, what's going on? And then they will tell them the settlements are going on. There is no attempt in the past four or five years to sit and progress the peace process. And so, out of frustration, the Palestinians are now doing exactly what they are doing. So, so in, what, in what way do you think Nigeria in any way you know, can get involved? The Turkish president asking Nigeria to you know, take sides with Palestine. Of what relevance does Nigeria stand? That is just uh, empty rhetoric. Nigeria has nothing to do. There are two things going on there. The Palestinian frustration, one, and then the Israeli Sizina. Mr. Ononuju. It also happens in Lebanon. Hmm. The Israelis have a program of making sure since 2014, they believe that, that Palestinians have built up some capabilities. So the only way to reduce it is this kind of crisis. And you can see that they're also plotting to now go there and start to implement what they call the ground activity. The ground activity will simply go there and mop up what the air bombings did not mop up. And uh, so this is a long-term strategy by the Israelis. And of course, this is why, as I explained earlier, the non-movement in the peace process is the reason why the Palestinians are now bringing their story to the world. So yes, they may lose some people, but they are the winners in this whole thing. Nigeria has nothing to contribute. Nigeria is not even stable. Nigeria has no wealth. What will it do to Israel? Nothing. Okay. What will it do for the Palestinians? Its citizens are hungry. So what will Nigeria do? Apart to vote alongside those who vote against Israel. Apart okay. from that, this issue will not be resolved to some issues. Okay. The Mr. Arabs who are following Trump to make peace with Israel should ask themselves, what about the Palestinians? Would you make peace with Israel and abandon the Palestinians? Mm. In, in closing, I'll tell you that nothing will stop any idea whose time has come. Okay, Mr. Anonuju, why do you think Nigeria has nothing to contribute to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict? Is it because of our own internal security challenges? Yes, are you there? I can hear you. Yes, I speak, repeat your question. I said, why do you think that Nigeria has nothing to contribute to this conflict? Is it because we're dealing with our own security challenges? Nigeria cannot afford to do anything abrasive in a way to offend the Americans or the European powers who, during the British mandate over Palestine, allowed the migration back to Palestine. Remember, this is not a small issue. It started over 70 years ago, when from British Palestine, yes. when they stopped, started to stop the return of the Palestinians, then the Palestinians now started fighting against the British, then till the creation of 1948, after the defeat of the Ottoman Empire in the First World War, and the end of the Second World War, and then the quest by the Europeans to drive Israelis back to their Jewish homeland. So for me, I believe Nigeria really has nothing to do. What would they do? They can't, they can't do anything openly, or they will incur the wrath of the international community. Right. We already need the Americans to be a little bit understanding in regard to the internal agitations for separation. And okay. they, they also need the British uh, understanding. So they cannot do anything to anger the British or the Americans. Uh, due to Buhari's policies, he cannot do anything. All right. Finally, I want you to speak on, you know, how, how um, if, well, damaging or effective the uh, peace deals that uh, Donald Trump 
uh, started between Arab nations and Israel. Um, how much damage did that do to the Israel-Palestine uh, crisis? The, that particular thing you talked about, could Donald Trump cut, is the reason for the despair and feel of hopelessness by the Palestinians. So that's why the current crisis is a bonanza for them, a propaganda bonanza. They have scored the bullseye. No matter what Israel does with its Iron Dome, the Palestinians are the winners of the current round of hostilities. Because for Trump to forego the peace process and then start to behave in a way as if all their Arab neighbors can be coerced into having a deal with Israel and abandoning the Palestinians, which means trying to shape the head of the Palestinians in their absence. That is why you see Hamas has now forced this current crisis, and I believe the Trump administration policy are responsible. Because if they have done anything to even tell the Palestinians that they are doing something, then we will know that the peace process is on. But by using that back door to make peace between the Israelis and all America's Arab friends, abandoning the Palestinians, simply told the Palestinians that the issue about a two-state policy may never be possible. Yeah. That's exactly where Israel continues to build more settlements in the occupied territories, forcing the Arabs into this state of despair and subsequently these actions by Hamas and its right. reaction from Israel. All right, catch on on the Jew. Thank you very much for unbundling the story for us and uh, thanks for your time this morning. Thank, Thank you. you for having me. Okay. Okay. And, uh, we definitely will be following up, um, you know, the um, 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 crisis. Um, any other bits of it will make it to our news and, of course, uh, subsequent discussions here on The Breakfast. Thank you very much. If you missed out on any of it, remember to join us on our social media platforms at Plus TV Africa. Yes, thank you very much again for joining us this lovely Monday morning, the 17th of May, 2021. I am Aneta Felix. And I am Osaogi Ogbonwa.